The price difference between these two markers is so great that there should be absolutely no area where these markers outweigh these ones. And yet, in possibly the most important area, these performed better. I'm gonna get so much hate for this. What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack. His name is Bob and welcome back to a brand new episode in the Cheap vs Expensive YouTube series. This is the series where I take two art supplies in the same category, put them up against each other to find out which one of them is worth it at their respective price points. And today, well... Like many artists, over the holidays I was gifted a set of alcohol markers. A good set? Nah, pff, I don't know. <laughs> Twin marker. I wonder if this is the twin markers everyone keeps suggesting. So this set of twin markers comes in at a price tag of $20, but was reduced to $10. That can't be good. <laughs> Who leaves the price tag on? Hang on. 60 markers! There are 60 pens in this collection! So these are the cheapest alcohol markers on the market. And they were on sale. Even better. But they are going up against the most expensive markers Copic, my favorite. <laughs> like I would ever say that. These markers are ridiculously expensive. However, today's collection are the Copic Chows, the cheaper alternative to the Copic Sketch markers. Actually, important note, the only difference between the Copic Chow and the Copic Sketch are that the Chow were designed to be affordable. They are in a smaller casing and therefore have much lower ink than the Sketch. Beyond that, they are completely identical. Now this is set B. I got this because I couldn't get set A, so the color range isn't as good. They come in at a price tag of $325 for a total of 72 pens. These are the cheaper alternative. <laughs> what? Or you know, you could get the standard version of this set, the Copic Sketch, you know, the normal marker with the usual amount of ink for around 500. <laughs> ah, that is so expensive. Now this video is gonna be something. I don't know what to expect from this cheap collection of markers. Maybe they'll impress me. They are, after all, going up against the B set of Copic and the cheaper alternatives. So, may maybe they'll... I don't expect much. But let's see how it goes. Quick side note before we begin. I have just launched my brand new gaming channel over on Twitch. There will be a pinned comment down below in this comment section. Please come over. Gaming is one of my favorite things to do. I play with a lot of viewers. I play with a lot of subscribers. It is just great. I rage a lot. <laughs> but it is a lot of fun. I have a great time. I hope to see all of you over there. But for now, let's get back to the video. All right, so before we get started with our battle, we are gonna sketch a little something to act as a battleground. And as with the two previous episodes, we did Mario and Bowser to celebrate the upcoming movie. Today, let's tackle the other brother, Luigi. Now this drawing is a mixture of source material inspired from the Luigi Mansion games. It is however a fairly basic drawing that I added random assets to just so we could use a variety of the colors here. Once again, for the line work, get yourself a light pad. This thing is awesome. And it will vastly improve the quality of your line work. Honestly, if you do not own a light pad, you are missing out. Go online, shop around, see what you can get, get the cheapest one available. You really don't need to spend a lot, but it will honestly improve your work. So, I'm kicking this battle off today with the office line, supplied in a nice carry case with a decent selection of colors. First thing to note with these markers is that they are a bullet broad nib combination. Not my favorite, but we will make do. Now the bullet is a standard bullet, neither good nor bad by cosmetic design, and its performance is... Oh. Okay then. Well, after a great start, the pen doesn't work. Guess I'll try the broad nib on the other side. What is that? This may be the absolute worst looking nib I have ever seen. Oh, and look, it doesn't work. Okay, so the first pen doesn't work. Now, I've never had a situation like this before, and I'm really nervous going any further because that is not a good sign. Seriously? You gotta be f kidding me. So, I just went through every single marker in the collection and I found that these <laughs> do not work. This is 15 markers! Ah! 
Now, if it was just one or two markers, I might be able to excuse it. Maybe they were stored incorrectly. Maybe there was a problem with this particular batch, but come on, 15 markers? That is unacceptable by any account. That's absolutely crazy. Waste of money. That's just, this is already looking great, isn't it? So when you find a marker that, so when you find a marker that, okay. So when you find a marker that actually works, we have a bullet nib that has a really nice design and is comfortable to use. Just a shame, it's pretty awful. There's almost no ink to it, it's like water. And it's so wet, it's actually warping the paper with a single layer of, we're gonna call that color, which to be honest, it's lacking. Switching the pens to the broad nib, I'm actually expecting a far worse situation here and Look, it does feel nice and smooth. The ink is pouring out of this broad nib, but this isn't an alcohol marker. It looks and acts like watercolor. So the base layer's done. These are not looking good. There is no color to them, and I would describe these as alcohol-free alcohol markers. They are just the worst. But it's time to give some layering and blending a try. And it's not so bad. I mean, I'm still not happy with how watery these are. The paper is struggling really hard to hold it together. The blends, however, are pretty good actually. Especially when we consider that this is a bullet nib and we are missing several tones, because you know, they just don't work. Though we are getting that watercolor finish and the paper warping is making life difficult. Now the casing of these markers is a square. It's not the most comfortable grip. The pens are fairly thicker than I would like, but honestly, not much to pull apart here. I'm already struggling to hold it together with these pens. And just like that, we are done with using these pens. Now at this part of the video, I usually give a short review of the products I've just used, but honestly, I absolutely hate these markers. Ridiculous. They are the worst alcohol marker I have ever used, and the rest of this video is just padding. So if you don't wanna watch the rest of the video, I don't blame you, because it's only gonna be a video now explaining why Copic is better than the worst thing I've ever used. Ah! So yeah, let's, um, let's get on with just finishing this art piece using Copic. Now, as I said in the intro, this collection of the Copic markers is set B, which doesn't give us a perfect range of colors. However, it will be enough for our comparison. Remember, we are not judging this drawing on the accuracy of the colors I choose today. We're basing it on the markers as a whole, how they perform and are they worth it for their money. And these markers, unlike the office line, are a brush broad nib combination, which for me, I love the brush nib. So I am very happy with this, despite the addition of the broad nib, which I hate. And Copic's brush is their selling point. It's the most talked about feature of these markers. So is it good? Yeah, it is. It is a little soft. It is not my favorite brush, but it's okay. The brush is a treat to use with very consistent ink flow, allowing for some really nice smooth and even layers. So nice in fact, that I forgot I was meant to be starting with the base layers and jump right into the blending. Oops. So I turned over to the broad nib for a quick test and it does the job, I guess. Honestly, I don't like the broad nibs, but hey, at least this one actually works. <laughs> Though I have to give some props to the cheaper ones here, the broad nib of the Copic is just terrible. It is way too slow and across large areas, it will mentally break you. So with the base layers done, yeah, we have base layers. Not so much different from what we saw with the office line, though we are already seeing some major color separation and that is not good. But let's dive into some blends and deeper tones. Now, despite my many criticisms of Copic markers over the years, there is no denying that blending is their strength and that is on full display here today. These markers slap. They are blending like butter and it is gorgeous. With even the most very minimal work, you still achieve those fantastic blends. That said, again, there's a lot of color separation. It's very distracting, which is unfortunate for such a high price marker. 
Though that aside, the user experience is a treat and it's very easy to get lost in the process of creating with these markers, which fundamentally, in my opinion, is more important than the results. I will always advocate for my mental well-being and enjoyment while creating versus the actual results. But hey, that's just me. So now I find myself in a really weird position here because when I started using these markers, I wrote down my initial thoughts and expectations on my verdict for the end of the video, which I'm gonna read to you right now. The office line markers are the absolute worst thing I have ever used. Copic absolutely destroy them in every way. And you know what? Now it was at this point I decided that I was going to smash the markers to pieces using this hammer. But I'm not gonna do that. Despite my initial thoughts of these pens, when the results are finalized and we get to see the markers side by side, something very unusual happens. The Copics have a huge color separation of their colors, which looks absolutely horrible, despite the blends and usage feeling amazing. The cheap side, however, has a much smoother and better colors, yet worse blends and feel absolutely awful to use. So I guess it all comes down to this, which is worth it. The left-hand side, office line markers coming in at a price tag of $20 for a total of 60 colors, or the right hand side coming in at a price tag of $300 for a total of 72 markers. I think my worth it winner has to go to the Copic markers. They are the most enjoyable marker. And for me, that's the most important factor, regardless of the results. However, mm, it wouldn't be too difficult to make a case for the cheaper markers being better based on the results. So that, yeah, Copic may have won this battle, but it wasn't easy. But what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think that I made the right decision here today? I gotta say, it was really difficult, but hey, I had a lot of fun. But unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. My name has been ADC Art Attack, and I do hope you enjoyed the first video of 2023. If you'd like to see more content, then feel free to click here to see my previous video. And I should let you know that I have just started streaming some gaming content on Twitch. So if you would like to join me over there, there'll be a link down below in the description to my Twitch channel. Please feel free, it's quite a lot of fun. I get a little bit crazy over there. And, um, well, it's a different side of me. Sometimes I rage. I don't know, maybe you'll like that. Maybe you won't. I'd, mm, I'm not selling it too well. Bye. <laughs>